I'm sure we've all heard discussions about making cities and suburbs more walkable, whether we're seasoned urbanists or not. The simple first thought someone might experience when hearing this is thinking about adding sidewalks to the side of a street. But what if I told you that simply adding sidewalks to a street doesn't make it walkable? In the same way that you can technically walk along the side of a highway, just because you can technically walk on a sidewalk down a six-lane strode doesn't make it walkable either. So what does make a street walkable? According to Jeff Speck in his book, Walkable City, How Downtown Can Save America, One Step at a Time, making a walkable environment comes with four aspects. A walk must be useful, safe, comfortable, and interesting. This is part of what he calls the general theory of walkability. So let's break down these four aspects one by one. The first one is useful. When we want to get somewhere, we consider how we can get there. Our options are generally by foot, by car, by bike, or by transit. But when we think about what is only within walking distance to our houses, what are we left with? Is there a supermarket, a post office, a clothing store, or are there only other homes that serve no purpose to walk to? If there are places that serve a purpose within walking distance, then you satisfy the first aspect. The next aspect is safe, and this isn't just about being safe, but feeling safe too. While it is possible to walk alongside a highway, you certainly won't feel safe with all the cars buzzing by you at high speeds, and you realistically won't be safe either. The third aspect is comfortable. If your walking path takes you down a large strode surrounded by giant asphalt parking lots, you certainly won't satisfy this condition. You'll feel out in the open and isolated. Every passing car will feel like it has its eyes on you, with the driver judging you for not being in a car like the rest of them are. The final aspect is interesting. The same example I used above can fit here. If there's nothing but gray warehouses and parking lots, then you wouldn't really want to walk there. But if there's a river surrounded by trees and local shops buzzing with life, then you would much rather walk there instead. Let's compare these points to some real-world examples to analyze their walkability. The first is the classic strode from an American suburb that I grew up in, Woodbury. So is the first aspect of being useful satisfied? Well, no, not quite. This commercial area, like many others in America, is completely isolated from where people live. In order to get here, you have to walk quite a distance, often in areas without proper walking infrastructure, which doesn't make them particularly useful. In order to satisfy this condition, there must be useful things within walking distance of your home, which clearly isn't the case here. How about safe? I mean, this one is pretty clear. Let me simplify it. When it's car versus person, the car always wins. An area isn't exactly safe if you have to constantly worry about giant machines weighing thousands of pounds that could veer off the road and crush you at a moment's notice. They could be distracted by their phone, they could be drunk, their car could suffer a mechanical failure, etc. This isn't to say that every road with car traffic is unwalkable, but when you have a strode like this, where the speed limits are relatively high, usually 40 to 55 miles per hour, it just worsens the safety even more. Also, crossing large intersections where strodes meet each other is even more unsafe, with quite a lot of fatal car versus pedestrian accidents happening at these places. Now is this place comfortable? Absolutely not. Like I said, you're isolated in a wide open space with nothing but corporate fast food chains and desolate landscapes surrounding you. I wouldn't want to walk here if I didn't absolutely have to for some reason. Finally, is it interesting? This one kind of speaks for itself. Unless you find asphalt and copy-pasted corporate chains interesting, then good for you. Now, let's look at this street in Rome, in the Trastevere neighborhood, which Speck references as being walkable in his book. This one's interesting for me as well, because I used to frequent this area when I lived in Rome myself. So is it useful? Absolutely. There's mixed-use zoning here, so people in the apartments above have shops and restaurants directly underneath them. There's also plenty of housing within walking distance from these places, which makes needing a car to get to them unnecessary. Is it safe? Somewhat. It still has car traffic in addition to tram traffic. However, I can tell you from experience that traffic often moves relatively slow here, and the trams have loud horns and chiming that lets people know they're coming. So it is much safer than an American strode, although it doesn't completely satisfy this condition. Is it comfortable? Again, somewhat. There's no wide open spaces where you'll stick out like a sore thumb, although the area is quite old and could perhaps use some upkeep and better greenery. Otherwise, it isn't bad at all. There is a nice square in the picture with shops and places you can hang out, although they are hindered by the abundance of parked cars. And finally, is it interesting? 
I would say so. There's different colored buildings, trees, unique street shops and restaurants. It isn't the most interesting place in Rome, or even Trastevere, but I would say this satisfies this condition. So that clearly outperforms an American Strode, but I can already see the comments telling me the comparison is unfair. So I'll throw in a final example of an American city just for the sake of being fair. Here's a street from my home city of Minneapolis. So, does this area satisfy the first aspect? I would say so. There's restaurants, a bank, and other useful places within walking distance of homes. Is it safe? This is where I'd lean towards no. There is a dedicated sidewalk separated from the road, although the road is still pretty wide and open, which encourages fast driving. Some traffic calming measures and making the road smaller would do more to encourage safety in the area. Is it comfortable? I would say yes, for the most part. There's a nice mix of trees and shrubbery, although the street is quite large, such that when there's a lot of traffic, the noise and hustle would likely detract from the comfortability. Is it interesting? Mostly, there are local restaurants and other places here, although it could use a bit more diversity in this aspect. In this picture, and in real life, there's a lot of untenanted retail spaces, which of course doesn't make a place super interesting. So, all of these examples satisfy the conditions in some ways, or not at all, but none of them perfectly fit the definition of walkable. Now, I won't waste your time in showing you a place that is perfectly walkable, because these tend to be pretty obvious. Prague, Amsterdam, Disney World even. However, I hope this video changed your perspective on what exactly makes a street or city walkable. And the next time someone tells you a place is walkable because a sidewalk leads there, you can show them this video. Thanks for watching.